not only am you an Irish guy, and shame on me! And shame on you! I feel confused. Forget the fact that Ange popped a cogglu this morning. Probably feels like Red Riding Hood's nan having filled the brutality of wolves. The point is, it feels like Ange popped a cogglu is the latest up and coming whiz kid manager, fresh off the block and new on the seat. We are all breathing in fresh air right now. The Premier League has made yet another awesome discovery. This is a fresh, tactically obscene, ambitious, incredibly clued in Aussie manager who sticks to his footballing principles, who is probably going to drag an absolute car crash like Tottenham, a squad that floundered under proven world class managers. He's now probably going to get them back into the Champions League, and yet. He turns 60 years old in less than two years. This man probably gets back pain just watching Home and Away on the couch. He used to probably as a nurse check his prostate four times a week. His own grandchildren probably try to hide his box of Milky Ways to prevent him getting old man diabetes when he tries to shove a pillowcase full of chocolate in his mouth. But how? How have we only discovered him now? It makes no sense. And shame on us. Two years ago, Celtic appointed Pasta Coglu. I mean, talks have broken down with Eddie Howe. And so here they were, taking the plunge on someone from the Japanese league. He was the boss of Yokohama Marinos. And let's be real, he looked a little bit like someone who sleeps in a dumpster. And who has daily baths in a swamp. Just brushing his teeth with a dead frog. When Celtic hired him, it was viewed as a disgrace. I don't get it. How can this bloke be this good at management? And yet he was able to get the age of 56 before anyone took him seriously. It astounds me. What if Howe had taken the Celtic job and Postacoglu was still trapped at Man City's feeder club in Japan? Wow. Was he just destined to spend the next five years begging Andres Iniesta to share a creepy sushi dish in the back of his Jeep? Celtic fans were right to be skeptical. I mean, the current Yokohama manager is Kevin Muscat, who is just the 90s answer to Joey Barton. Some ugly, ogreish, almost hillbilly, who looks like he probably used to chew the kneecaps of his midfield victims whilst at home in bed, but still, I feel like Postacoglu has been robbed of a career. This is a classic example of a top class manager who never got the big break. This is a man who has been around so long. When managers thought about reigning treble winners and European champions at the start of the the millennium and they pulled out of the FA Cup to concentrate on the Club World Cup. Yeah, nobody realized, but Sir Alex Ferguson was pitting his wits against this guy at that tournament. That blows my mind. It's been like finding out that Roy Hodgson used to go bowling with Isaac Newton or that Ian McKellen used to play golf with Leonardo da Vinci. Are they really that old? How can we try and pretend that Postacoglu is a fresh new coach on Sky when well, there's a man who throughout his management career at one point was compiling a tactical plan to stop Romario. Yes, the actual Romario. The Brazil legend is now 60 years old and has been a politician for a solid 15 years. The Boris Johnson of Brazil. The man who made his Brazil debut in 1987. Yeah, that Romario. He was the manager of South Melbourne. And yeah, when they played against Man United, they lost 2-0 to two goals from Quinton Fortune. Which is a bit ironic because Pasta Coglu has had exactly zero fortune throughout his management career. Instead of just getting belittled on TV by a smoke Aussie pundit. One viral clip. That was what Pasta Coglu was famous for. I mean, Man United actually failed to get out of that group. They drew with Mexican team Naka. Which just sounds like a type of pill to help you poo. They were also beaten up by Vasco da Gama with, yeah, Romario ripping them apart as if they were soggy cat food. They actually sacrificed the FA Cup that year to, um, sort of embarrass themselves on the world stage. Which is a bit like Denzel Washington refusing an invite to the next Oscars to instead just do a Twitch livestream of him doing naked ballet with a cat. Pasta Coglu has been a manager since Kevin Keegan was trying to help Newcastle win the league. In the length of time, Pasta Coglu has been a manager. We have seen Josie Mourinho have four different spells in the Premier League. Pasta Coglu was a manager when Arsene Wenger was given in the Arsenal job. Funny enough, he was also some weird freakish gamble from Japan. Chelsea have had a managerial vacancy 20 times while Postacog was being a manager. Not once did they ever ring his phone. And lads, they appointed a toad like Afrin Grant. He just looks like an uninvolved Pokemon. I mean, nobody at Stamford Bridge would have known who this man was. Again, this is a man who for 50 years of his life could have stood naked outside King's Cross and not a single football fan would recognize him and beg him for a selfie. Instead, he'd probably have angry old women throwing bags of mud at his head. We, as a footballing society, have willingly neglected this man for decades. Just letting him rot like a decomposing dog in the corner of the Asian globe. Lads, when Manchester had to let go of Sir Alex Ferguson, the club then went for a really lazy, uninspiring replacement. Just electing David Moyes. You know, the fellow had been at Everton for 11 years, he felt like a safe chunk of familiar furniture. You know, a bit like lazily setting your newly divorced mum up with that creepy janitor you knew from school. You know, the weird bloke you used to see stealing Kit Kats out of people's lunchbox. The one who used to take a wee on the school rugby post. The one who you once saw biting the head off an actual squirrel. Yeah, instead of you, you know, scouring the eligible over 50 bachelors in the area. No, you just go for him. There was no due diligence when appointing Moise. Pasta Coglu was 47 years old in 2013. He was the boss of Melbourne Victory. And yes, appointing him would have looked weird and stupid, but it probably would have worked. We have seen he is a much better manager than Moyes. 
a lot more modern too. He's on another level tactically. Lads, we all saw this guy in the world stage. Coaching Australia at the 2014 World Cup. And we all ignored him. Nobody took the slightest notice of this man. I mean, he lost all three group games, yes, but come on. They were against Spain and Holland. The two teams who contested the final of the previous World Cup. Oh yeah, and a pretty devastating underdog Chile team too. Led by Alexis Sanchez, who was one of the informed forwards in the world. You know, before he discovered the joys of eating pie for breakfast at Man United. Postacago was never approached by Premier League club. Ever. Not even Crystal Palace in 2014, when Tony Poulos quit on the eve of the season, and they were really desperate. It makes me think, how many potentially world-class managers exist in the weird corners of the globe? How many tactically elite coaches reside in the hills of Liechtenstein or the Seychelles? Are there potential mini Guardiolas taking charge of under nine's football on a beach in Trinidad? Are there future Arsene Wengers whose advanced tactical ideologies are wasted in their PE sessions on the Marshall Islands? Well, are there blokes stuck in West African tribes scribbling tiki-taka instructions in Swahili on the back of a rock? At the risk of sounding like David Attenborough, are there yet to be more undiscovered breeds of potential Essentially elite managers. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm talking about them now as if they're seals. As a football society, shame on us. Let's give some more randomers a chance. And no, I don't just mean the local Uber driver parked outside your house who keeps staring at that primary school. No, no, I mean managers in obscure neglected leagues. Honestly, let me know in the comments. What obscure managers doing wonders in miniature disrespected leagues? Which one is the next super coach to keep an eye on? And I know I've just potentially let my comment section open to be invaded by a sea of football hipsters, but let me know. Well, I mean, should we all take notice of the boss of Vissel Cope? The fact Postacago is even in European football is a complete and utter fluke. The entire reason for this man's existence in the Premier League is solely down to Eddie Howe. Cast your mind back to 2021 and this ex Bournemouth coach was on the verge of getting the Celtic job. Fine, it looked like a quality, sensible pick. Celtic fans have been wanting to get back to that Brendan Rodgers-esque ball. So great. Bring in another guy who punched him of his weight, playing pretty stuff in the Prem. It looked like a sensible move. I mean, there's a club which once offered Roy Keane the manager's job based off a CV that looked about as impressive as a snail's corpse. So how would have been an excellent choice? If Eddie had agreed to move to Scotland and win the treble five years in a row whilst getting him into the Champions League quarterfinals, then Paul Stokoglu would still be someone who would probably have less Instagram followers than a Donegal cow. Celtic randomly appointed him on a whim in 2021. And even then, the board didn't really have total faith in him. He was on a 12-month rolling contract. How non-committal is that? It's a bit like agreeing to marry someone with a prenup stating that you get to divorce for free as soon as she forgets to brush her teeth. The Celtic fans thought disappointment was a joke. A reckless gamble. Really the best we could guess? Doubt it. Bored embarrassing themselves again. Nothing says you're the man we truly believe can lead us into a bright new future than a 12-month contract. Sack the board. Who? Anzi, when this appointment was made, Celtic fans asked that same one-word question so many times. They probably all sounded like a family of owls with Tourette's. Honestly, the amount of a Glaswegian suddenly Googling his name. I mean, the heads at Google probably thought that Scotland were about to invade Greece, or it was just a bunch of people asking the post office whether they could send igloos in the mail. Pasta Coglu was given the Celtic job 24 hours after he'd failed a job interview at AK Athens. So the snobbery didn't just exist in Britain. It was also from the nation where he was born. They gave the gig to Vladan Milojevic instead. He was sacked within two months and a year later and they were giving the job to the manager of San Jose Earthquakes. Something which sounds like a roller coaster ride at Disneyland. Even Greece didn't want Pasta Coglu. I mean considering we've only just discovered him, my brain instantly assumes that he must have been a child when Greece won Euro 2004. Playing an ugly brand of football that would make you want to puke in your hand. But no, he turned 39 years old that summer whilst coaching Australia under 17s. He's been around forever. Lads, according to reports, he was only ever given one job interview in England with a championship club and apparently the sporting director didn't even do him the dignity of getting out of his car. It was just chatting to Pasta Coglu in between revving the engine. It was just, how is this any way to treat a proper manager like Ange? The only reason Pasta Coglu was even noticed by Celtic is just a freakish coincidence. Because the recently departed Celtic CEO Peter Lowell, he has a son who works as a scout for a Man City football group. And he was the one who helped Pasta Coglu build an all-conquering Yokohama Marinos because they happen to be one of City's feeder clubs. I mean, he really caught the attention of people behind the scenes of City when in a preseason friendly in July 2019, his Yokohama team lost 3-1 to Man City Shore, but um... They were the ones who dominated the possession stats. But if it weren't for Lowell's son, Mark, Postacoglu would still be nowhere. Pathetic. If Man City did not have a feeder club in Asia, none of this would be possible. Postacoglu would probably still be living in a one-bedroom flat where the toilet doesn't flush. Honestly, I would imagine he's only newly become rich. I would imagine even before lockdown, this man was not a millionaire. And he's nearly 60. I feel like he has wasted his career, and I think it's not down to him, it's down to the snobbery 
in Europe. Honestly, I feel like we all owe him compensation because this is a man who's had enough talent to have been comfortably rich for about 35 years. Honestly, his wife is owed a few Gucci purses. Anyway, that's the video. What do you think? Let me know. Has Ange been hard done by? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.